Hello, everybody. I'm here today to talk about a book that I recently read, and I loved it. I love this book. And uh, anyway, go back to the beginning. There's a publisher called Earthling Publications, and I'd had a, a book or two from them. But last year, for Halloween, as part of their Halloween series, this was number 16, they published a book called Boys in the Valley by Philip Fricasse. Book I strongly recommend. And this was a book that I'd never heard of. I didn't know the author. And I'd heard some people saying, this author is great. You ought to get the book. So I did. And gosh, I'm glad I did. Thanks for the advice, y'all. But I uh, love the book. Love the author. This, this was the beginning of many more purchases and many more pre-orders, and I'm still waiting for some pre-ordered books to be published from this author. So it worked out really, really well for me. Now, fast forward to the year 2022, Earthling Publications announced another Halloween book series. Halloween comes around every year, so every year there's another one, hopefully. Anyway, they announced one, and it was called Marla by the author Jonathan Jans. And I'm not that smart. I'm not that dumb, but I'm not that smart. But I didn't know the book, didn't know the author, and same old story. We talked about it right there. I heard a few people saying this author is phenomenal. And I started saying, dang, I don't want to miss out on this chance to get this book. Because if you if you know anything about this one, if you didn't pre-order it, you're probably going to have to pay a lot of money for this book. And I don't want to be caught in that situation. So I listened to a podcast of Jonathan Jans and read the synopsis of a couple of his books, and they, they sounded good. The podcast was entertaining. It was good. So I decided, shoot, man, I'm going to buy this book. I'm going to pre-order Marla from Earthling Publications. And if I don't like it, well, the worst thing that happens is um, I don't like it. I got the book, though. If I do like it and I didn't get the book, I might be paying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars for a book down the road somewhere. So I pre-ordered it. And uh, within a couple days of pre-ordering it, the owner of Earthling Publications, Paul Miller, offered up a chance to some folks to get an advanced review copy of Marla, as long as you agree to do a, a review to read the book and review the book and get him a review. So I got on the emails and started begging for an advanced review copy, not only because I wanted to read this book that I'd already bought and I didn't want to wait for the limited edition. And I don't like reading limited editions because if I screw it up, I just screwed up assigned a numbered book that I paid 50, 60, 80, whatever bucks for. And I don't like that. So I'd rather read something else. So I asked for a, an advanced review copy and uh, Paul Miller said, okay, I'll give you one. Just give me a review. So he sent me a, he sent me one and I did a video uh, showing you that when I unboxed it and here it is. And I got to reading it right away. And I had a period of about six days in there where I didn't read a thing. I was up in a place we have in Fort Payne, Alabama, doing some work, doing being an electrician, being a plumber, being other things. And I didn't read anything working from wake up to go to bed. The kids were there, whatever, all sorts of stuff going on. I didn't read a word of any books at all. Even though I took this book with me, I didn't read any of it. Anyway, I'm back, got back to reading, finished the book, and I want to talk about it. I already put up a review on Goodreads. I put up a review on the Earthling Publications Facebook group. But I want to talk a little bit about this book, Marla, what I think of it and my impressions of the author based on having read one book. Now, right off the bat, the the cover art for this book was one that immediately said, wow, what is that? When I saw Earthling Publications list this for pre-order, it attracted me immediately. That's artwork that, uh, that, to me, what is it? But I said I didn't know the author, didn't read the book, or didn't know anything about the book, so I passed for a minute, and then I changed my mind reading about the book, reading about the author, what have you. So the art artwork looks great, and it's going to look great on my shelf. That's always a bonus for a book collector. But the reader in me, I don't want to collect books that I don't really like at the end of the day. So I'm, I'm trying to bridge both of those gaps. Anyway, I start reading this book, and right off the bat, I'm in. Because Jonathan Jans 
starts giving us characters. He starts immediately giving us things about those characters that you can grab, you can grab hold of. I don't need uh, the whole beginning of time up until now about a character to know, do I care, don't I care, do I like, don't I like. But he starts giving me things about these characters so I can quickly decide, do I like them, do I don't like them, do I do or do I don't. Do I like this character or not? And that's one of the big bonuses that I got immediately. We started getting characters and we started immediately finding out Good, bad, like, don't like, stuff like that. So right off the bat, we're introduced to a police detective named Carl in this small town called King's Branch. And getting a little bit to know about Carl, we also start getting some of the the backstory for the titular character. I don't know what that word means. The titular character of Marla. And figuring out that there's stuff coming. Anyway, we get to know Carl a little bit. We get to know his partner, police detective, RJ. Uh, we got their last names. I won't bother with all the last names because there's a lot of characters in this book. But anyway, Carl and RJ are partners. RJ is the only black police officer in this entire department, which probably isn't big, but he's the only one. He and Carl are partners, but they're also best friends, and they're also living some different lives. Carl's wife and daughter are dead. We don't find out right away what happened. You figure that out throughout the story of the book. RJ's a dad of some youngins. He's married, he's got some young kids, and so he's got the daddy, the household responsibilities and such as that. So they're living somewhat different lives, but they're best friends, they're partners, they don't always agree, and they're different personalities and such. So both characters are terrific. Right away, I decided these are fellas that I wish were my buds in my life. Um, so there's a couple of murders. We get we get a, a death, not murders, deaths. We get a death in King's Branch. And it's a wealthier guy, more well-known guy. And then we get another death in King's Branch. Somebody that's kind of on the, the B side of life. Not so well-loved, not such a good person, not so well-known, such as that. And Carl, almost right away, starts to make connections between the two deaths, but also connections between the two deaths and his encounter and his knowledge and things of, of Marla. And like I said, we got a little bit of a backstory of Marla earlier in the book. But Marla is a teenage girl. The town has urban legends. I talk about her. She's been blamed for some things. But she's a reclusive teenage girl living as a recluse, almost trapped in this house with Irene Gorman. And there are, she's been blamed for some things. Very spooky. People will see her in the window of their two-story gothic house on River Road. And kids will throw eggs at the house. In one of the stories, kids threw eggs at the house and one of them died of a heart attack. So it's it's kind of the town spook story. But we really don't know. Is Marla just this poor girl who's being held in this house, not allowed to go out, not allowed to do anything? Or is there really something to it? Meanwhile, his partner RJ is not so into the connections, but they're partners. So he's back in his partner's play. The police chief doesn't give a hoot about the connections, doesn't give a hoot really about the second death of this lower life person. He, he wants this big name guy, rich guy, he wants that death solved, figured out, marked off the books, settled, don't want to hear anything else about it. But, as you can probably guess, Carl and RJ want to get down to the bottom of it. They want to solve this stuff and get to the truth. They disagree with a lot of folks. Also, there's a character in this book called Annie. Like I said, there's a lot of characters, but there's a character named Annie. She's a social worker. She's helping to try to make sure that these kids are having good enough home lives to meet the minimum criteria for the... She's trying to help kids in bad situations. And she's got a husband that's a not such a good fellow. She's got kids. One kid, uh, a son that likes to play the internet, the video games, stuff like that. He is completely tuned out of life. 
and a daughter, she's a teenager, and she's a real jerk. <laughs> uh, anyway, whatever. She's a, she may be a good girl, but she's a real jerk. She treats her mom badly. She wants nothing to do with her mom. Her dad's definitely not helping. But this lady, Annie, has got a bad home life. But she's a real sweetheart. Immediately, you, you f like this lady. I'm not talking about I'm in love with you, I want to marry you sort of a thing. But you like this lady. She wants to do right. She wants to do good. You feel bad for her, the way her daughter and husband and all that treat her. But anyway, a few characters right off the bat that you really dig. There's also quite a few characters in here that are just awful people. And I almost feel guilty for saying this, but you kind of want them to get what they deserve. You want to see... Bad things happen to bad people sometimes. I don't like to be like that, but these characters, are, in a book, in a fictional setting, I'm okay with seeing bad things happen to bad people in a book. And uh, I'll just leave it at that. As we go along through the story, we have a couple of cops trying to figure out what's going on. What's causing these deaths? How do we get it to stop? And such as that. And we find not only is it a police procedural, a detective, a mystery, a whodunit, but it's also at the heart, this is a horror story. And where I find myself thinking I know what's going to happen, eventually I figure out I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going on. There are some twists in this story, and I don't want to get too deep into any of that kind of stuff. But Jonathan Jans has written a book that I really dug. And now, after reading this book, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'll give it five stars. I know five stars is as good as it gets. But if I love a book, I'm going to give it five stars. And maybe you don't do it that way. But I'm going to give this one five stars because I, I hate giving books that I really like anything less. Um, I'm going to say a five-star book, a book that I should read again one day. And I... I don't reread books very often. Only a few that I've read over and over. But I'm also going to be looking up Jonathan Jan's books. There's a lot of them out there, and I'm going to start reading them. So this was the one that, that broke the ice for me, and I've got some reading to do, and that's a good thing for me. I, uh, I don't know of anything else I really want to say for this book review, except I strongly recommend it. Earthling Publications, I believe, still has... Some more pre-orders of this signed and numbered limited edition book, not this one. This is a paperback review copy, but it'll be a hardcover, beautiful book. I think there's 500 copies in total that are available, and they've still got some available. So I strongly recommend go out and buy that book. When you get a chance, when you get an opportunity, read that book. And I can't vouch for anything else from Jonathan Jans, but I'm going to jump in. I'm going to read and I appreciate the opportunity from Paul Miller, Jonathan Jans for writing the book. And I can think of no more lives to tell on that front. So say la vie, baby.